Have you ever pondered the weight of a name? How about the name Cyprian Nataria Mira? Born on March 6, 1955 in the heart of East Africa, Burundi, Ntaria Mira was a child of the Hutu ethnic group. This is noteworthy because the Hutus were historically marginalized, their voices drowned in Burundian politics that was dominated by the Tutsi minority. But Ntaria Mira, he was a force that refused to be silenced. He was a beacon of hope for many, a symbol of change in a politically volatile landscape. His life and political career are a testament to his relentless pursuit of equality, his unwavering commitment to his people, and his unyielding dedication to his country. His story is one of resilience and courage, of hope and despair, of triumph and tragedy. A name that spelled change in a politically volatile landscape, let's delve into Nintari Amira's story. The path to presidency is no cakewalk, but for Nintari Amira, it was a journey marked by determination and resilience. Born on March 6, 1955, in the heart of East Africa, Burundi, Ntari Amira was a member of the Hutu ethnic group, historically marginalized in the political landscape dominated by the Tutsi minority. The stage was set for a life of struggle, but Ntari Amira was not one to back down. His political career was a testament to his perseverance. He became a prominent figure within the ruling party, the National Council for the Defense of Democracy, also known as the CNDD-FDD. His rise within the political ranks was not just an ascent in power, but a beacon of hope for the Hutu community, representing their growing voice in a country where they had been sidelined for years. 1994 was a year of reckoning. Following the assassination of President Melchior Ndede, Burundi found itself at a crossroads. Amid the chaos and uncertainty, Ntari Amira emerged as a beacon of hope. He was appointed as the president of Burundi, succeeding Ndede. His rise to presidency was not just a personal achievement, but a milestone for the Hutu community, for it was an affirmation of their rightful place in Burundian politics. But the road to presidency was fraught with challenges. Ntari Amira took the helm during one of the most tumultuous periods in Burundi's history. Ethnic tensions between the Hutu and Tutsi communities were at a boiling point. The assassination of President Ndadaye had sparked widespread violence and civil unrest, leading to a cycle of ethnic-based conflicts and political instability. Ntari Amira's rise to power was a beacon of hope for many, but the turbulence of the times was just beginning. The challenges that lay ahead were daunting, but Ntari Amira's resolve was unwavering. His story is a testament to the power of resilience, a chapter in Burundi's history that continues to inspire. Stepping into presidency amidst chaos, Ntari Amira was a captain sailing a ship in a storm. From the moment he took the helm, Ntari Amira found himself in the eye of a tempest, a landscape of political instability and ethnic conflicts that had been simmering for years. The assassination of his predecessor, President Melchior Ndadaye, had ignited a firestorm of violence and civil unrest. The repercussions were immediate and severe, plunging the nation into a vicious cycle of ethnic-based conflicts. This was the chaotic backdrop against which Ntari Amira's presidency unfolded. As a member of the historically marginalized Hutu ethnic group, Ntari Amira was no stranger to the deep-seated tensions that had long marred Burundian politics. But now, as president, he was tasked with navigating these turbulent waters and steering his country towards peace. It was a daunting challenge. The assassination of President Ndadaye was not merely a political crisis. It was a spark that ignited the dry tinder of ethnic tensions. The Hutu and Tutsi communities, already at odds, were further polarized. Violence was rampant, and political instability was the order of the day. In this volatile environment, Ntari Amira sought to chart a course towards reconciliation. He aimed to bridge the divide between the Hutu and Tutsi communities, to quell the violence, and to restore stability to his beleaguered nation. It was a Herculean task, one that demanded strength, resilience, and a deft political touch. Ntari Amira, despite the odds, stood firm. He was steadfast in his commitment to his country and his people. He refused to be swept away by the storm of unrest and chaos that raged around him. His presidency, though brief, was marked by his unwavering dedication to the cause of peace and reconciliation. 
but the storm was relentless, and despite his best efforts, Antari Amira was unable to stem the tide of violence and conflict that swept across his nation. In the face of adversity, Antari Amira stood firm, but destiny had other plans. April 6, 1994, a day that would send shockwaves across East Africa. As the sun rose on that fateful day, none could predict the impending calamity that would forever change the course of history. President Cyprian Tariamira of Burundi and President Juvenal Habyarimana of Rwanda were returning from a summit in Tanzania, their planes slicing through the skies towards Kigali, Rwanda. But as the plane approached its destination, tragedy struck. In an event that remains shrouded in mystery, their aircraft plummeted from the sky, crashing in a fiery descent. The wreckage told a grim tale, there were no survivors. In an instant, the lives of two national leaders were extinguished, their dreams and aspirations for their nations buried amid the smoldering debris. The immediate aftermath was a maelstrom of confusion and grief. Two nations were left leaderless, plunged into a state of uncertainty and fear. But the sorrow was soon overshadowed by a rising tide of anger and vengeance. The plane crash was not just a catastrophic incident, it was a fuse that lit a powder keg of ethnic tensions that had been simmering under the surface. The death of President Habyarimana, a Hutu, was perceived by many as a calculated move by Tutsi rebels. The flames of suspicion were fanned into a wildfire of violence. Within hours the Rwandan genocide had begun, a brutal, systematic extermination of Tutsis by Hutu extremists. In a matter of weeks, hundreds of thousands of people were slaughtered, their lives claimed by a wave of hatred and brutality that seemed unstoppable. The plane crash had not just claimed two lives, it had set in motion a massacre that would stain the pages of history with its bloody imprint. The tragic death of President Ntari Amira, a Hutu leader striving for peace in a nation stricken by ethnic conflict, only added fuel to the fire. His death, along with President Habyarimana's, contributed to the escalation of violence in both Rwanda and Burundi, two nations already teetering on the brink of chaos. A disaster that marked the end of two presidencies, but sparked an inferno of violence and chaos. In the torrent of history, even the shortest presidencies leave a lasting impact. Cyprian Tariamira's presidency was a brief chapter in the complex narrative of Burundi's history. Yet his tenure, though fleeting, left a profound legacy that continues to shape the nation's political landscape. Tariamira was a leader who navigated the stormy waters of ethnic tensions and political instability with an unwavering resolve. Born into the marginalized Hutu community, Tariamira rose to the highest office of the land, embodying the aspiration of many Burundians who yearned for representation and justice. His rise to power was a beacon of hope for the Hutu majority signaling an era of potential change in a political system long dominated by the Tutsi minority. Yet, Ntariamira's presidency was a journey through tumultuous times. His tenure was marked by the daunting task of healing a nation deeply scarred by the assassination of President Ndade and the resultant wave of violence and civil unrest. In the face of these challenges, Ntariamira sought to steer Burundi towards reconciliation and peace. His brief presidency was a testament to his commitment to unity, a vision that he carried with him until his tragic death in a plane crash in April 1994. The shockwaves of Ntari Amira's untimely demise reverberated beyond the borders of Burundi. It was a tragedy that shared its date with the beginning of one of the darkest chapters in human history, the Rwandan Genocide. The crash that claimed the lives of Ntari Amira and Rwandan President Juvenal Habyarimana ignited the spark of a devastating conflict that led to the loss of hundreds of thousands of lives. The aftermath of Ntari Amira's death had far-reaching consequences. It intensified the ethnic tensions in both Burundi and Rwanda, plunging the region into a cycle of violence and political instability that lasted for years. The echoes of this tragic event still resonate in the heart of the Great Lakes region, a grim reminder of a painful past. Antari Amira's legacy is thus intertwined with a period of profound strife and upheaval. Yet, he is remembered not for the turmoil that marked his presidency, but for his unwavering commitment to peace and unity. His life and leadership serve as a symbol of resilience and determination in the face of adversity, an embodiment of the spirit of a nation that continues to strive for peace and reconciliation. 
Today, Nedaryamira's memory lives on in the hearts of many Burundians. His legacy is etched in the annals of Burundi's history, a testament to his indomitable spirit and unwavering commitment to his people. His life, though cut short, continues to inspire and guide the nation on its path towards peace and prosperity. Cyprian Taryamira, a name etched in the annals of Burundi's history, a leader whose legacy continues to resonate amidst the turbulent echoes of the past.